Line charts are absolutely essential in our line of work. Typically, we use lines to see how values change over time, but don't restrict yourself to these rules. As with everything in life, sometimes you have to break those rules. But for now, we're going to get started with line charts and discuss one of the most important concepts in Tableau, which are discrete and continuous values. Let's go. In this video, we're going to cover line charts. But before we do, we're going to do a few housekeeping things. If you go down here, you're going to see this first icon. This first icon, if I zoom in, that allows you to create new sheets. Same as Excel, where you have multiple sheets. Um, that button lets you do that. And if I get out of my drawing tool, the button up here lets you do the same thing. So this also lets you create new sheets. Um, let's say I wanted to clear all of this. I go, that's rubbish. I don't like it. And I want to start fresh. I can use this button. And this button clears the entire thing, right? So if I just press that, clears the whole thing. But let's say I, you know, was trying to press analysis and I accidentally press that. I can use the undo button to bring it back. There you go. Very easy. Um, what I want to do is I actually want to keep this because, you know, you want to kind of have a collection. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to rename this. So I can either double click to rename or I can right click and go rename. Okay. And let's call this bar chart. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new fresh sheet. That way you can revert back to this if you ever needed to. Needed to. Okay, so now we have a brand new sheet. And what we're going to do in this lesson is line charts. And in particular, we're going to cover a very interesting topic called discrete and continuous. Warning, you may not get this right away because the concept of discrete and continuous is it can be confusing. And I remember I was confused at the beginning. And what I found that really helped me was just over time, just using it more and more. And then you start to, you know, see the differences. So let's begin with a line chart. So typically a line chart has two things, um, at a minimum of two things. So you got time and then you have some sort of measure, right? Some sort of value that you're counting. So let's start with the measure. So I always like to start with measures because then I kind of know what I'm going to be splitting. So let's do, uh, let's see the profit. So I'm going to double click profit, right? Which will bring it into rows or I can, if I just get rid of that, I can drop it into rows or I can drop it in here or well, anywhere in here, really, and it will do different things. But this one is the rows. This one is the columns, right? And this is a the values, I guess, if you if you will. So let's drop that in there. And straight away, I have my bar chart. So it tells me the total profit is $286,347. And what I want to do is split it this way. So I have here a date. And whenever you're going to use a date, you have to make sure that it is the date format. And the way you can tell is if I zoom in here, it's got a little calendar, a little cute calendar. Okay, so you will have the calendar. And if your particular um, data column, right, the, the field that has all your data has time as well, it will look like a calendar with a little clock as well. And that's how you can tell the difference. And the main reason for that is if you ever wanted to visualize time, so hours, minutes, seconds, and so on. If you have just a regular calendar, it goes year, month, day. Okay, so let's get out of this. Okay, so all I'm going to do as a starting point is I'm going to double click this order date. And what that's done is it's immediately made it a line chart. Remember before when we brought in category, it made it a bar chart. Um, Tableau intuitively guesses that, oh, I think you want to do a line chart because you've used a date type. You can always switch this back to a bar if that's what you want. And the way we do that is through this marks card. So here it's set to automatic. It just guesses what you want. Or here you can set it to be whatever you like. So bar. We can switch it to area. We can switch it to square if you want little dots. Well, not dots, but squares. <laughs> Circles for dots. You can change the shapes of these things. Okay. We'll be using this in uh, these ones in all sorts of different applications, right? You can make them text if you want, fill it in with some sort of value in there. You can make it all sorts of stuff. So I'm not going to get into that too much at the moment. We're just going to switch it back to automatic. Cool. So this is showing me the sum of profit over time, right? And the granularity, right? So that word you're going to hear a lot 
is back is at the year level. If I increase the granularity, meaning I'm I'm splitting it up further, right? I'm probably going to a month level. If I want to increase the granularity again, I'm going to the day level. If I want to increase the granularity again, I'm going to hours and then minutes and then seconds. And basically get tiny 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 slices, right? which is very granular. So you're going to hear that word a lot. So if you only have like a few points or it's relatively high granularity because year is the highest unless you want to go, you know, every millennia, but I don't know any Excel spreadsheet that, you know, measures in millennia, right? So that's what you get. You get by year. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back into our meeting room and someone goes, Jed, I need to see the profit over time, but I need to see the little bumps in between the years, you know, by, let's say by quarter. So how do you do that? Well, by default, Tableau does by year. But what you'll also notice, if I zoom in here, you'll see a little plus symbol, right? So what that plus symbol represents is what we call a hierarchy. Dates automatically have hierarchies, but um, not all hierarchies are dates, okay? It's sort of like, you know, all scotches are whiskeys, but not all whiskeys are scotch, you know, kind of story. Uh, so what happens if I press this? Well, what it does is it will add another pill at the next level of granularity. So if I press it, what you can see, it's actually split it up by quarter. So you can see by year, by quarter. Okay, so you got year by quarter. Pretty cool. So let's go one further. Let's say I wanted to see it by month. I can press it again. And it goes down to month. And again, these are line charts. Just continuously going. I don't want to use the word continuously, but it just keeps going, right, for the entire sample set. So let's say I want to go down to the next level. I can press plus again, right? But the problem you start to see is it starts to be very, very long, okay? And that is the discrete representation. You know, you've got individual points here. So let's say I wanted to um, go backwards. Well, I can just press the minuses going back. So if I press this one, it gets rid of the days. If I get rid of this one, it gets rid of the months and so on. So the question becomes, well, how do I show the entire thing in a more compressed view? Because one of the things I hate uh, once you get to building dashboards is anything where you have to scroll. Typically what you want to see is a not a summarize, not even condense really, but a very specific visualization of what the person needs to know without scrolling or reading. I mean, that's the whole point of data visualization so that information kind of jumps out at you and it kind of just makes sense, right? But we'll get into the art later. So here we have them all as split up as individuals. So this now enters into the conversation of discrete versus continuous. So let's go all the way back. So if I go back, 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 Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here and what you'll see is I have two options and I don't think I can go into my drawing tool with this open. Let's try. No, I'll just have to do it like this. So the first thing you're going to see is you've got all these year, quarter, month, day, more. Year, quarter, month, week, day, more, right? So you've got two sets for some reason. And then here at the bottom, you've got discrete and continuous. So let me explain what the differences are. This top group are your discrete selection. Okay? This next group is your continuous selection. Okay, And I'll show you the difference. Let's say I switch this to continuous. Right? You see the visualization is actually spread out over the full um, view. And here's what it's doing. If I increase the granularity, like we said before, I'm going to right click here and go quarter. Right? So this is the continuous section. right? If I click here, it goes back to discrete. But here, what we're interested in is continuous. So if I press quarter, you can see it still fits, right? If I go again, month, it still fits. If I go again and go week, it still fits. And one more time, day, right? And you can see it's very granular, right? Very, very detailed, but it all fits. So what you will find as, as we go along this journey of learning Tableau, there are times where discrete is much better and times where continuous is much better, depending on what you want to do. Now, the difference between them is not just if it fits or not. There are more um, intricate things about it uh, that you can do. So let's do a new sheet and let me explain that. So down here, we're going to do a new sheet. And what I'm going to do is that kind of starting point that we had. So I'm going to bring in profit just by double clicking. 
Then I'm going to bring the order date by double clicking again. Okay, so there we have it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to a bar. So I'm going to click here on the marks and click on bar. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to quarters. Right? So I can either press the plus button like so, or I can right click here and go quarter, right? But what you'll notice is something different if I do it that way. So if I go quarter, I've got two pills. If I right click here and go quarter, what's happened? How come it's not split? Well, this is one of the properties of discrete. If I do just quarter by itself, right? What it's actually doing is it's use, it's looking only at the quarter, right? It's not taking year into account, which means if I think of this quarter, it's actually the sum of all the quarters for all the years. Well, how can we see that? Well, let me show you. If I bring in order date and drop it into color, it's actually split it up by year. So you can actually see the individual years inside. Okay, there you have it. So discrete is able to look at individual components. So this is really handy. Let's say I wanted to compare month on month, right? So let's say I, I want to go, well, how did one January compare with the next January, with the next January, and so on. You can't do that in continuous. Because in here, if I go back and switch it to month, you know, one January could be, you know, right here, and one January could be here somewhere. I don't know. And it's hard to go, well, high, low, I don't know, right? It's hard to see that. Whereas in discrete, right, we can see that very easily. So let me show you how you would do that. Let's get rid of this color for the moment. And I'm going to switch this to um, month. There we go. And now I have all the, the summation of all the months across all the years. So now I can bring that order date and drop it into color. Okay. So you can see here individual Januaries right next to each other. And this is one of the massive benefits because now I can look at them um, specifically and together, right? I can go one step further. It's like instead of um, splitting it by just on top of each other, why don't I split it laterally going that way? Well, I can bring order date and put it here on the right side of month. So now we're kind of going the other way. So instead of going year month, we're going month year. And what that's done is it starts with the month split and then the year. So here we can see, all right, we did good for 2018 January. We're on our way up. It was going good. And then boom, what happened, right? So this is one of the massive things with Tableau in that um, there are tools inside this software that lets you really dig deep into what is going on in that data. Now, just as a demonstration, okay, you don't have to do this part just to kind of, so you can see how it works is if I click on this and I want to investigate it, I can go keep only. And what that does is it gets rid of everything else and it shows me just that one. So if I go keep only, it's now showing me that single bar. Then I can split this up. So let's get rid of these two. Again, you don't have to do this. I can go, well, show it to me in categories. Okay, so I can see that these two categories have actually kind of are in the negatives. So let's have a look at these two. Keep only, okay? Let's see, I wanna see a by subcategory, right? Oh, I can see all these negatives, okay? Let's have a look at those. So these are the ones that are not profitable. Let's go keep only again. All right, let's have a look by segment. Again, I can see these categories. And again, keep only. And you can see how it's so easy to dig deeper and deeper and deeper into your data to find something interesting. You're like, oh my gosh, it's this particular facility in this particular area selling this particular product that is not profitable and we have to change something and then your business will improve from there. So that's just an, an example of how we do deep dives, but it gets even crazier. Like, I'm like so excited for you to see all the other stuff. It's just gonna blow your mind. So I'm gonna keep just gonna go, I'm just gonna go undo until we go back to the original. And there you have it. So that is your introduction to discrete and continuous. And what I'm gonna do is as we go along deeper into this course and we start using discrete and continuous, we'll kind of revisit the, the topic so you get more and more practice because this particular top uh, idea, it requires some practice. But for now, you can do your line charts as you wish. Enjoy.